What's up, Art Squad? Mr. C here, ready to start a totally unrehearsed, completely on the fly art lesson on being inspired by art history to create your own new masterpiece. All you're going to need is my personal uh, virtual art museum, which you can access uh, via link. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, link in description. On Instagram, link in bio. And if you're on Seesaw, because you're actually one of my students, uh, there's a link on there too. Uh, the second thing you're going to need is any art supplies. I've got, you know, some paper here. doesn't have to be two-dimensional. You could go 3D. You could use strange found objects and get real creative with it. I'm just a 2D guy. And uh, when I say art supplies, just to prove how random this is, I am using the most utterly random bag of art supplies I could find. They were just lying around. And uh, it even has some like post-it notes in there. I, I don't know how I'm gonna use those. Okay, so here is my virtual art museum. I have actually not even chosen a, a piece to work from yet. I'm just gonna scroll down and see what we have somehow. I'm going to actually do this. Okay, there we go, I'm scrolling. Uh, there's El Greco, I love me some El Greco. He's, he's my dude, super artistic. Well, they're all artistic. I've got a lot of Van Gogh in here, some Monet. Apparently, one image disappeared. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Clifford Still. That's a sweet one for uh, those of you who love Denver. Let's see. Let's keep going. There's some Da Vinci. There's some, uh, some West African tribal sculptures. I'm really loving all this stuff. You know what? I think I'm actually going to... I'm going to... Well, I'm going to scroll all the way through so you can see all of it. I have selected art history pieces from all across the world, all different genres, all different cultures, all different um, eras in history. But I saw one piece that I never, I never actually end up using. It's a, uh, it's called Easter Island. It's a super famous artwork, and I just never, um, I've never really done anything with this before. So. Before you start creating, please note that on this really cool um, museum here, you can zoom in crazy close and get some epic details. So that's what I'm gonna work from. I zoomed in. I'm gonna I'm gonna work from this zoomed in image of one of the really cool uh, sculptures at Easter Island. All right, so let's see what I end up coming up with. So. First thing I see is a face, and it's kind of what, what I would call uh, expressionistic or stylistic. It's not a realistic face. Uh, here's a golden sharpie. So I'm going to just do a really, really rough underdrawing. Look, and, and what I'm doing right now, this is mine. You don't have to copy mine. I want you to find yours. The only thing I want you to copy about what I'm doing is the fact that I'm doing it on the fly. That I'm going with what feels right. I'm going with an artwork that strikes me personally right now. I just squeezed my head in the shot. Um, and uh, yeah, and I'm, and I'm kind of going in the moment right now. So if in this moment I was feeling more 3D, I wouldn't be drawing. You know, if, and what's kind of cool is I'm going from a, a 3D sculpture to a 2D artwork. Maybe you flip it. Maybe you take a painting and make a sculpture out of it. Anyways, I love this guy's crazy hat, so I'm definitely including that. And um, if you are into drawing, just a few tips that I'm noticing I'm doing right now is uh, I'm only copying the dark parts. I, I'm, I'm letting my eye do the work. I'm not really listening too much to my brain or my plan. I mean, yes, I am actually using my brain. But what I mean is I'm not, uh, I'm not sitting here planning it out. Instead, I'm going, I'm, my brain is saying, don't follow the plan. Instead, just go with what your eye sees. If your eye sees dark, copy it. So that's, that's how I'm doing this right now. All right, now let's see here. Um, I feel like I'm done with the gold. And I, al I also promised that I was going to find a way to use these post-it notes. So how about this? I'm going to stick them all over, and the post-it notes are actually going to become the part of the background. Uh, so that's, that's called it's what they call a figure-ground relationship. What I'm doing here is um, the ground physically is this white paper. Um, so the paper would naturally want to look like the background, but what I'm doing is I'm flipping it. The thing that I'm adding is going to look like the background. So even though the figure is the post-it note and the ground is the paper, I'm flipping it. I'm actually making the 
the white paper look like the figure, and I'm making this greenish kind of turquoise post-it note look like the ground. So that's um that's sort of a kind of a traditional topic to talk about when analyzing art is how does the artist uh, work their figure ground relationships. Um, so yeah, just bear with me. I'm trying to bust this out kind of quick. And see, like I always say, no mistakes in art. That doesn't mean that you can't make mistakes. It means if you do something that you can't change, uh, pretend it's on purpose. You know, these marks that I'm making here are really scribbly. Maybe my gold marks that I initially made aren't perfect, but that's okay. I'm going to use them. I'm going to pretend that those decisions I made are part of my art supplies now. So I, I have to work with it. It's part of the fun of not always having a plan. Having a plan is not a bad thing. You certainly can work with a plan if you want to. <laughs> I'm a poet and I didn't even realize it. But yeah, but but if you don't have a plan and you're feeling intimidated, you're not entirely sure what you want to do, just start making stuff like I did here and see what happens. You might discover something. You might stumble upon something pretty cool. All right, so I want to say I'm about mer, halfway done. Um, you know, I'm looking at that, it says seven minutes. Okay, I'm gonna say I'm three quarters done. One thing you'll notice, is that towards the end of a project, or like the the last ten percent of your work makes ninety percent of your impact? That was kind of a convoluted thing to say. So let me simplify it like this: You spend all this time doing stuff, and your work doesn't seem done, right? Like I just spent the last seven minutes doing this, it still doesn't seem done. Well, I'm gonna try and squeeze in the finishing touches to the final two minutes here. The things that I do in these two minutes are gonna make it feel finished. Like uh, I noticed I had a lot of crayons here. Maybe you have a bunch of crayons at home and you're thinking, oh, crayons are so lame. I can't believe that I have to work with crayons and stuff. But actually, you could really do some pretty serious artwork with crayon. I mean, look at this rad texture I'm getting uh, with that orange and that toothy paper. Even just cheap sketch paper or printing paper uh, can get a nice sort of tooth with your with your with crayons. You know, you don't have to press hard the whole time. If you change the way you press, maybe sometimes you press hard, maybe sometimes you press light, maybe sometimes your marks are slow, maybe other times your marks are really fast. If you do that with just a simple Crayola crayon, um, it, you can still get some really interesting effects. All right, so let me see. We're nearing my final minute here per my promise that I just made. I kind of want something to happen in this background with the uh, with the greenish post-it notes. What if I like took this, because it's a greenish blue, but I could, I could sort of tip it over the edge of green here by adding some green marks on this greenish blue. You know, some folks, you know, when they see greenish blue, they say blue, and other folks see greenish blue, they say green. I've always been one of the green people. Maybe that's why green is one of my favorite colors. So I'm going to try and advocate for this greenish blue to be on the green, in the green zone, on the green team. So yeah, here we go. I'm going to get some like nice doodles in the background here, make some quick marks. Oh, and as promised, I was going to keep this one to roughly 10 minutes, so I only got about 30 seconds. So um, there's that. Th but honestly, like, bam. Let me just scribble something in here. Done. I just decided it's done. Look at that. We started off with this pretty rad uh, Easter Island project. We zoomed in. That huge suggestion for those of you who are my students. Make use of this really cool zoom in feature. Uh, you can get some nice details that way. And yeah, here he is. My Easter Island dude. So I'm just going to zoom out here and say thank you so much for watching. You rock. Stay creative. If you're watching this right now, you're an amazing human being. And I like you. How do you like that? You don't even have to like the video because this is a video that likes back. All right, stay cool. Keep on making art and rock.